Welcome sweet friends old and new to crafting with me Indiana Jones but today I am your sugar plum fairy bringing you a little sprinkle of Christmas magic. Let's get started with the Christmas season with a huge playlist called Christmas Palooza. I am so happy to host this together with so many of my friends. We are sharing crafts and recipes, thrift flips, shopping hauls, anything goes related to the Christmas season to get you inspired and get you ready for the most beautiful time of the year. This year is a very special year because I will be helping to decorate this beautiful 100 year old estate and this year's theme is going to be Alice in Wonderland. So I'll be sharing many of the ideas and the decor that I've had to make myself. This is one of the rooms that I will decorate as little Alice's bedroom. Let's get started. This first project was inspired by Erin at the Provincial Farmhouse. She created a French country Christmas book and I was awed and I needed to create one of my own. She was also inspired by something she found in a thrift store. So let's see what I create. I wanted to create a beautiful Victorian style Christmas book with this first project. As you can see, I'm under the ever watchful eye of my quality control cat, Kuru, and she's going to make sure that I follow the instructions properly. I made sure she watched Erin's video to make absolutely sure that I was doing the right thing. What I did here first was glue together all the pages. And first I glued down the principal pages with a little bit of hot glue. And then I just kept gluing the sides of the sides of the pages with some Mod Podge. And I didn't have to soak all the way through all the pages and go one by one. Just doing it on the edges of the pages was sufficient to hold those pages in place. Now, as you can see, I'm clamping them down so they stay in place as they dry. But but soon enough I was able to take off the clamps and then I used this beautiful decoupage paper that came from my sweet friend Jackie of Jackie Burns Creations and she actually purchased it from her friend Rachel at Stella Rose Boutique so there was a whole bunch of different images in this beautiful paper and as you can see I'm just taking a wet brush to rip off the edges so they're not so squared off. I thought at first I was going to do it squared off and then I thought no I think it looks more vintagey more authentic with the ripped off edges. I apologize for my Halloween uh, nails but obviously we just finished Halloween a few days ago so this happened prior to Halloween so that's why I still have my little Halloween nails there. Anyway, I'm just ripping this apart and now I'm going to Mod Podge it to that one page. When you're Mod Podging, it helps to actually put everything in the center first. How can I say it? Glue down the center first and then get the edges down and that kind of eliminates a lot of wrinkles. Sometimes if you put Mod Podge all over the item that you're going to Mod Podge to another piece of paper or a piece of wood, it can get very wrinkled. The other thing I use is this mini iron that I got from HTV Ront and I use that together with some parchment paper and that really helps to eliminate all the wrinkles. Now I do this once the page or the Mod Podge has dried on the page so it's not all wet and goopy and you know getting all over the place. There's nothing I really don't like is wrinkles on my decoupage projects. I don't know how you feel about that but sometimes it adds character and sometimes it just annoys me <laughs> but especially for Christmas I like you know here's the difference don't you see this as the difference when it's Halloween it's all spooky and messed up and you can have like whatever it's messy I like that but and then when it's Christmas I like it to be like perfect as perfect as I possibly can get because I just I don't know it just it matters to me it matters to me more than ever especially for Christmas time even though I'm still a very messy crafter so there you can see I'm doing the Mod Podge again and again I'm using this little iron I love that I never had this little iron before and I got it and I thought oh you know I saw other people doing it. I was like oh bougie you have to have a little iron oh my gosh let me tell you let me tell you I don't think it's so bougie because it works. Now you you know don't necessarily have to get HTV raw. They sell it on Amazon. I think they even sell it on Timu. So get what's best and most economical for you. Now I need to add a little more embellishment. So for this other page, I'm going to use these beautiful transfers. Thank you again, Jackie. These are so beautiful. And these are these IOD transfers. Love, 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 love. 
Oh my gosh, I am so happy. I mean, she got me so many beautiful things. Thank you so much, Jackie. So remember, Jackie Burns, and she's got a wonderful channel, and she's so lovely to listen to. She has a very soothing voice. And again, I just, I'm, I'm so happy with this vintage look. Where am I going to place this? I don't know. I mean, at first I thought of doing Alice in Wonderland, but I thought it would be weird for Alice to be reading a story about herself because I'm going to use this in her room. Alice in Wonderland's bedroom is going to be very Victorian and vintage inspired. So I thought it would make sense that as a little girl, she would be reading stories or making, maybe collecting, you know, clippings of Santa Claus from, you know, magazines or newspapers that, that she found around the house. Because the books of Alice in Wonderland were written during the Victorian age, I thought it was just appropriate to be inspired by this beautiful season and the Victorian age when Christmas really came to life. It's because of Queen Victoria that Christmas trees came inside thanks to her beautiful prince who brought his wonderful German traditions with the Christmas tree and she just popularized it and of course books and stories like A Christmas Carol really brought the vintage Victorian look of Christmas into all of our imaginations so I thought it was just appropriate to use this decor style in Alice's little bedroom. Once I finished with the designs on the pages, I am gilding those wonderful pages. And I'm using what? Well, first of all, I'm using Mod Podge from Plaid, the family of products of Plaid. And also this wonderful gold paint is also from Plaid. I think it's folk art. So, um, yeah, I'm just using as much as I can from my stash. And I, again, this book, I think I got it from the Dollar Tree. It was something I found around the house. Actually, I believe it was a diet book. So I don't know how smart that was because I'm probably going to need it after <laughs> this holiday season. Now, here I am using one of the molds that I actually got from Timu, I believe. And I didn't know how big it was going to be because sometimes I bought some molds from them and they're a little smaller than I thought. But I'm just using some baking powder and some air dry clay. Yeah, not foam clay. I'm actually using air dry clay. And I'm making sure that I'm getting all those wonderful ridges. Now, Erin had used an IOD um, clay mold, but I'm just using this and it's very similar. It looks like, you know, a bow of garland or a garland of bow or bow of garland. I don't know, one of those things, <laughs> but it's perfect to add a little Christmas Victorian flair to this book pages. And all I'm going to do now is just clean it up and paint it and I will add it to the pages. Erin adds her her clay first and then she paints it afterwards, but I know I'm a klutz with paint, so that's why I painted it before I added it to the page. So now to add my clay embellishments to my page, I am simply using Mod Podge. You can use Mod Podge or you can use wood glue or white glue, whatever is best for you. This held it just fine. I haven't had any problem using Mod Podge and I only use Mod Podge because I couldn't find my wood glue. It's somewhere in here. You know how it is. But I wanted to get the project done, but I was so happy with how it turned out. Now, what I did do afterwards was I used my finger and some gold paint and used it as though it was rub and buff or used a little bit of a dry brush technique and it looked fabulous. I was so happy with the result. I am so happy I was inspired to do this because I am truly enchanted at how well this turned out. I hope you like it too. Now I did some research to look and see what little girls Alice's age would play with because I thought it would be fun to have them in her room. And of course they had porcelain dolls and teddy bears, but there was also a lot of mention of these beautiful vintage Victorian paper dolls. But I took it a step further. Not only did I want to have some paper dolls in her play area, but I decided that I was going to decorate her little Christmas tree with paper dolls. Now I keep saying little because the room is one of the smallest rooms at the estate and it is a little, um, well, there's some spooky uh, history in that room. So I don't know if anything, I'm, I'm praying nothing will happen, but yes, there's some spooky history in what they call the children's room. So I thought it would be fun to just include these beautiful paper dolls, colorful and just so fun into the actual decor of the tree itself. I was able to very easily find 
many uh, ideas and many types of paper dolls. This one came with her own little dresses and I just wanted to add some real lace for embellishments and some ribbon and of course a little bit of glitter. Now I'm not allowed to use glitter at the estate because it is a museum but as long as it's pasted and it's you know covered like I will do with the Mod Podge as it adds a, a little bit more security with regards to glitter not falling off. And once it's on paper, usually glitter doesn't really flake off that much. Now I'm just adding a little ribbon. That will be how I hook her onto the tree. Not that she's a hooker. It's just I'm hooking. It's just a little hook for the tree. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know why my mind went there, but you know. But look at how adorable she looks. I love this little paper doll. Now I found a different type of paper doll, which is just the top of her because in those times they would expect you to add the skirts yourself so here I'm adding my own little skirt made out of you know just some drawing paper that I had around the house and then I'll will embellish that little skirt and just create a beautiful little vintage Victorian looking doll for the tree I just thought this was such a fun idea and I hadn't really seen too many paper dolls on Christmas trees and I remember as a child loving paper dolls so it's not far-fetched to think that Alice would like little paper dolls on her Christmas tree as you saw I thought it looked a little dull with just that you know beigey kind of paper so I decided to of course paint it gold first and add all of these beautiful lace embellishments these are those uh, mauve colored um, laces mauve was very big back in the 90s and this is from my mom's Christmas stash so I feel that she's with me as I create this project and she would have loved the idea I think she would have sat right down beside me while I was making these cute little paper dolls and she would have been so happy she told me how she used to play with paper dolls herself so this was a really nice exercise now although here you'll see that I make two or three paper dolls I am actually making around 20 <laughs> to cover the Christmas tree I hope that's enough I think I might be overdoing the amount of home decor that I'm making right before placing them into the estate but I love the fact that I am adding a lot of my own ideas my own uh, style to the rooms that I am decorating and I love the fact that I can say yes these were homemade just as they were back in vintage and Victorian style times and although the glitter may not be really made of glass because back in those days glitter was made from glass um, which I, I'm kind of glad because I am not very you know glitter in me we've had issues before and I've had glitter in my eyes but that's made of plastic and I would hate to think of a glass glitter pieces in my eyes no thank you now this ruffled ribbon isn't this beautiful I don't know where my mom found this but I was just so thrilled and thought it was a perfect match it was just so much fun I really felt like very childlike creating all these wonderful designs and here are just a few of the designs that I have created for Alice's little tree I've also been given a second room which will be the Queen's garden room there will be a Queen's garden tea of course but I am inspired by all things roses and gold and crowns and as you can see there's a little princess there watching me there's a little Luna and these arches I actually had from Dollar Tree I bought these a while back I probably have around six and I thought how perfect to add this as a decoration to the tree because we need a lot of filler in the tree especially if it's like a large seven foot big tree I need to have a lot of filler and I don't want to just have regular decorations because this is supposed to be fun and whimsical and really out of the box so this is the easiest thing using this arch I painted it gold from black and now I just added a styrofoam ball half of a styrofoam ball and adding these beautiful florals that I did get from Timu I will talk again and again and again about the beautiful florals at Timu and this wonderful black and white harlequin ribbon I didn't know where to put it I got this from Hobby Lobby and I thought it was perfect I just didn't know where it should go but once again I just added it to the top as this will also help to um, I will hook this 
onto the true with another, another loop of this ribbon and I think it will look just fine. What do you think? I'm going to give you a lot of frugal ideas that you can use on any tree, on any theme, like this one here. All I'm doing is taking this plain ball, I believe this is from Dollar Tree, I think I got this last year actually, and I'm just going to embellish it to make it look more special. Now you have to understand, I am volunteering for this project and I am footing the bill for the decor, believe it or not. Lucky for me, I have a nice big hoard of stuff that I save from one year to the next, and I buy things on clearance from one year to the next, especially when it comes to Christmas. So many of the items I already had on hand, or I could print for free, like you saw with the paper dolls, and it was very easy for me to embellish these, especially with these lovely crowns that I created again with my anchor make 3d printer if you want to check out exactly how i made it you can check out my video here but it was so much fun to create these crowns and it was perfect to add the embellishment to make this beautifully regal now these ribbons this is a red grow grain ribbon and all i'm doing is creating a bow you know i'm bow challenged but all I did was fold it over, fold it over again, and then I just pinched it in the middle and tied it around with wire. I think this is the easiest way for me to create many bows fast and easy. Once I wired up my bow, I was very fortunate that Totally Dazzled, I'm an affiliate with them, and they provided some items, and they actually have Mackenzie Childs looking uh, buttons, pins, you name it, and that is what I'm adding to the center of that bow just to give it a little more oomph and give it a little more of that Alice in Wonderland decor ideas. Now, I wired the crown that I made with my Anchor Make 3D printer. I had embellished it with some Swarovski crystals that I had on hand, believe it or not, and all I'm going to do is add that bow to the crown, and it, I believe, I think it just looks fantastic i hope you think so too now i have to tell you how surprised i was that one of my sponsors sent me this little cat hammock and they just wanted me to review it it wasn't a requirement or anything like that it wasn't a paid promotion and they saw that the cats were in my channel and they wanted to give them a little gift so here i am putting this little hammock together actually that's not me that's Luke because he considers the kitty cats his little sisters, so he wanted to build this for them. Now, unfortunately, it was a really, why there's Luke, it was a really nice big hammock. And uh, I, we were having difficulty adding it to my craft room window, so we've placed them in the front window. I have this beautiful picture window and they love it and I, I can tell you that it was easy to watch me see Luke put it together and it really was very easy to put together there were just a couple of items and he was able to place it onto the window and it held on to both cats believe it or not there's Luke again and he was just so happy to put this together for his little sisters and they really love it let me tell you for Halloween it looked like my cats were floating in midair in the middle of the window so it added a little, a little spookiness especially with my little black cat Guru my little lucky cat so it was I am so very appreciative and if you if you would like to have this hammock you're more than welcome to check out the link to the products below Once again, to create more decor for the Queen's Garden Room, I found these beautiful graphics online and I love them. So I decided to use them for my ornaments. And what I did was, because they were just on regular paper, I decoupaged them on some black craft paper so that even if the ornament was to turn around, it still looks nice, as you can see there. And these wonderful frames, once again, I created this with my Anchor Make 3D printer. And I can tell you I'm having so much fun with this item. And I think it was just perfect to create these Baroque 
looking very regal looking frames and they print in white or I, I should say they are manufactured in white and I go ahead and just spray paint them in gold I can also use um, I spray painted them just to make it faster but there was one that I think I did by hand just to test it out and here all I'm doing is just gluing each one of those little portraits in to the frame and I think it's gonna add a little more dimension to my Christmas tree along with the baubles that I created and once again as I said before it's not like I'm making one or two I'm trying to make a good amount of these ornaments to make it easier for me to decorate on a budget once I put together the frames and the little portraits inside I decided to create a bow and like a very special hanging hook with a bow and um, some pearls depending on which one I believe I used pearls and a little gold bead and I think it added so much more to this cute little frame and I think it's really pulls up the regal factor even more with these wonderful ornaments If you're in South Florida during the holidays, please stop by and visit the Deering Estate. Thank you to everyone who joined this Christmas Palooza playlist and please remember to check the full link for the playlist below so you can see all the wonderful crafters. Please visit them, like, share and subscribe to these wonderful channels who are really so inspirational. And thanks for you being an inspiration to me by leaving such wonderful, kind comments. And as I always say, stay safe, be kind. God bless each and every one of you. And remember to live the adventure. And I will see you in Wonderland very soon.